On this edition of CPT Snowmageddon, Curry deals with the after effects of record breaking snow. From leaking dorm ceilings to structural issues at Ulan Rink, we have all the bases covered. Sexual assaults on campus, are you prepared to protect yourself? And the fascinating history behind Miller Fieldhouse. Curry Primetime Report begins right now. Hello and welcome to CPT. I'm Brianne Callen. And I'm Scott Smith. Let's get right to the headlines making news this semester. With over 100 inches of snow and more still to come, Curry, like everyone else, has been dealing with damages and setbacks. Around campus, it's easy to see the problems and many students are complaining too. This video is from Bell Hall. As you can see in this video, the ceilings are wet with water and the carpets are soaked. Even the walls now have damage where leaking snow from the roof has hit the building hard. Elsewhere on campus, take a look at these icicles of old suites. Some of them are almost two stories long. Cherry pickers are all over campus in a frantic effort to get rid of them before they cause even more damage. On the third floor of old suites, you can see clear water damage around a student's desk and over near their bed. The news is not much better over at Ulan Rink. On February 21st, the state shut down the rink because of concerns over the snow on top of the roof and possible structural damage to some beams. Over the next few days, workers remove snow from the snow, and at this taping, Ulan is now ready to host the public again. In fact, a hockey playoff game is scheduled for Saturday, February 28th. In the meantime, the men's hockey team was forced to play their home game at a rink in Denham. The Curry shuttle to the MBTA was also affected. CPT's Kyle Coppola has been following that story and joins us in the studio with more. Kyle? The MBTA had to shut down numerous times during the snowstorms, leaving more than one million riders without the service. Now, the Curry Mattapan T trolley was affected because the trolley wasn't running and people had to be bused instead. Professor Kirk Hazlett, a communications prof PR professor here at Curry, who takes the T service, say that there were ways to improve the service. We need new equipment. Uh, we're operating uh, with, in some cases, with equipment that's 50 to plus years old. Some of the newer equipment is about 30 years old. The tracks are not, um, just can't handle the kinds of uh, weather that we have here. Uh, it's just, the, the system itself is in a mess and we need to basically start from scratch. Now, Professor Hazlett says any mention of the 2024 Olympics is premature until they get the tea fixed. Reporting for CPT, I'm Kyle Coppola. Brianne? Thanks, Kyle. With more than 1,500 students living on campus, even during the height of the blizzards, students needed to be fed. CBT's Alyssa McCann tells us how Sodexo fared. Despite the amount of snow, the city of Boston shutting down, and the driving bans here on campus, the kitchen staff managed to feed the students during the winter snowstorms. Blue chef is very good. He's come in on Sundays before that first storm and placed a really large order with, with uh, Cisco, the food company to assure that there was plenty of food here for everybody. Thankfully, sous chef Charlie Fedor managed to make enough orders and successfully feed the students here at Curry. Through the snowstorm, they were here for us. They made us meals when it was really hard to get on campus, so I think it was really great. After two and a half feet of snow, the dedicated cafeteria workers managed to stay here to help feed students. Some were even put in a local hotel down the street to get here in time for opening of the marketplace. Although it wasn't easy for the kitchen staff, the rugby team helped dig the staff out of the snow to show their appreciation. On behalf of all of us here at Curry, <laughs> Please, no more snow. <laughs> I'm Alyssa McCann with CC8 TV. Special thanks to the rugby team who really stepped up during the first blizzard. And CPT took to campus after the first blizzard, thinking that was going to be our big storm of the year. Little did we know, to find out how students coped. What did I do to the blister? I sat inside and let my neighbor plow for me. Uh, I'd say so. I was surprised there weren't any power outages. I was, I was expecting that, but um, I think it lived up to it. Um, you know what? I'm from Vermont, and uh, we kind of get this kind of thing. Not all the time, but I mean, it was, it was a good blizzard. It was, it was, it was a good time. Um, doesn't really matter because I'm from Alaska, so this cold doesn't really bother me. I don't really care, it, but it bothers me a lot because I'm not used to this kind of weather because I'm from Haiti and we don't get snow, we don't get nothing like that. You know, it's pretty, pretty cold for me. Yeah. It was great because we had no school. Yeah, for two days. I wish we could have got more school off, but 
I kind of like walked around and listened to music. It was really nice. In the blizzard, I was out there in shorts and a t-shirt like I am now, and uh, you know, just living life. Um, well, so far, I haven't really noticed a lot of ice or anything, so I mean, I think they've done a pretty good job with those. A lot of times when I'm worried, people tell me, don't worry, that bad thing won't happen, but in this case, it happened. I was cold. Blizzard was great. Awesome blizzard. Love it. It's pretty good. I'm happy there's no school, that's for sure. It was pretty bad, but, you know, the school's doing their best, I guess. Awful. It's just stay awful. Like, the sidewalks, there's like, pretty, pretty much there's only one way to get, you can go through it. You can't go both ways. Commuting, so it's going to be difficult, you know, as a commuter, you know, getting through snow. We were, na we were so naive back then. Yeah, that was about 85 inches ago, which brings us to how we are paying for all this snow removal. The Curry College snow removal budget is getting hit hard. How hard? We don't know. CPT did contact numerous offices on campus to find out just how much all of the plowing, shoveling, sand, and salt are costing us, but we are unable to get any c comment. To put it in context, Boston usually allocates $18 million for snow removal. Right now, the city is nearing $40 million for the snow removal this year. That's more than double. Having snow day after snow day might seem like a great at the time, but now you might just find yourself in class on a Saturday in the near future. In order to meet the required contact hours for a course, Curry faculty was given two options to make up missed classes. One is through online coursework using tools such as Blackboard. Another is to reschedule a missed class for a Friday afternoon or a Saturday. So make sure you're in contact with your professors regarding a makeup plan. Oh, and what you've been doing with your snow days. Here's one brave Curry student showing us just how ridiculous the amount of snow has been here on campus as he leaps out of his dorm window. Go, man. <laughs> that was a leap from a two-story window. As Mayor Marty Walsh famously said to Bostonians doing the same thing, quote, it's a foolish thing to do and you could kill yourself. For the record, no injuries were reported here. Well, still ahead on CPT, the Ebola crisis. It might be out of the headlines, but for one Curry student, it is still front and center. And do you have mold in your dorm room? We'll offer up some tips on how to deal with it. And later, find out some of the crazy things that Miller Fieldhouse has been used for in its 60-year history. Don't go away. This message is to all students who plan to interview for an internship or a job in the near future. Do you have any of these materials in your Facebook photos? Are you under the age of 21? Recent news states that all employers are beginning to request your Facebook passwords during interviews. Why? Because they want to review the Facebook page during the interview to see if there is any inappropriate content that needs to be noted before the decision. If you are underage and have inappropriate content on your Facebook account with materials such as beer, cans or bottles, liquor, or any other illegal materials, it should be immediately removed before your interview. Future employers don't want to see any type of law breaking, especially underage drinking. It's not worth looking cool on Facebook and not getting a career because of a simple red cup in your picture. Be smart and clean up your social media sites. Welcome back to CPT. It's time for stories happening on other campuses around the country. CPT's Brandon Enroth has been checking out what's making news at other colleges. Brandon? Our first story coming out of Madison, Wisconsin involves the protests of college students on the campus of the University of Wisconsin over recent budget cuts made by Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker. In a report to CC8, Walker announced plans to slash $300 million in funding for the state universities over the next two years, a 13% cut. Those cuts would also accompany reforms to the state university system that would hand universities greater independence. Protests have continued all through this week, both on campus and even at the governor's home itself. CC8 will keep you updated as the story develops. Our next story involves an unfortunate altercation between a 46-year-old male who murdered three Muslim students near the campus of the University of North Carolina. 46-year-old Craig Hicks has been charged with the murder of Dia Bakarat, 23, Yusor Abu Salah, 21, and Razan Abu Salah, 19. This story has gained an international spotlight due to some controversial racial comments posted to social media by Hicks. Witnesses reports that the altercation may have been over, started over a parking spot in the apartment complex located near Chapel Hill. Our final story today comes out of Chicago. A 19-year-old University of Illinois Chicago student was charged with sexual assault in what prosecutors call a Fifty Shades of Grey reenactment. 19-year-old Mohammed Hussein restrained the female that he assaulted using rope and a blindfold. 
After yelling multiple times to stop, the female was able to get one hand free and escape the apartment that she was located in. She then called the authorities that arrested Hossein later that evening. His bail is currently set at $500,000, despite him being involved in several leadership programs on campus, as well as being a student ambassador. Thanks, Brandon. Sexual assaults were also a hot topic on Curry's campus last semester, when at least three sexual assaults, assaults were reported on campus. As CPT's Vanessa Kelly reports, there is a way to help protect yourself from an assault, and it's available right here on campus. In a matter of seconds, you can find several self-defense videos on the internet. But public safety officer Irene Costa has taken initiative to have self-defense classes here at Curry called RAD. Uh, RAD is a program of realistic uh, self-defense that we use for tactic, uh, tactics and techniques. So pretty much what we do, um, we teach women about how to be self-aware um, and prevention, uh, reduction, how to reduce your chances of getting assaulted on campus or anywhere. Public safety has been cracking down since there's been so many sexual assaults on campus at night. Regardless of like everything that's been happening, I still feel safe walking around campus. Public safety has had blue light box to show all the blue lights they have on campus. They said all you have to do is press this red button and help will be on their way. There are 41 blue lights all over campus, Just but like public safety doesn't want to take any more chances. They have been asking students to stray away from walking alone, try to use a campus shuttle, and take our set defense classes. Anyone can take it. It doesn't matter if you're not considered weak, but more um, maybe unexperienced. Yeah, I take a self defense course. If you're interested in taking one of these classes, make sure you check out the flyer for future dates. For CC8 News, I'm Vanessa Kelly. Contact Public Safety to find out when the next self-defense class will be scheduled. Curry has also modernized the blue lights around campus. Don't really know what the blue lights are? These are emergency boxes to help get you out of trouble. We took to campus to see how students feel about them. I think they're really good. I think it's really awesome that we have them. I mean, there was a few attacks last semester, and I'm sure there's been other stuff going on, like, previous years. And I mean, like, I've seen stuff like that on other campuses. I'm a transfer, so my other school, they had stuff like this all the, like all over the campus. So I think it's a good addition. I think they've been a really good thing to be on campus, you know, helps promote safety. We definitely needed the ones that they placed in recently. I think it's nice to see a lot more of those more frequently around campus. Yeah, I definitely feel safer with them. They're definitely in accessible places, so it's nice. I think they'll make a difference because if, like, somebody's in trouble, I think it'll, like, It'll help them because they can be aware that like something's going on. I feel safer and they're bigger so they're easily seen. Blue lights usually at night stick out a little more than any other kind of lights, you know. It kind of differentiates itself from the others. So yeah, I think they'll be a little bit, a little bit more useful. They're very secure. Um, they make everyone feel good. I've never felt more safe, you know. I mean, honestly, if something happened to me, heaven forbid, you know what, the blue light system would be there. Of course, if your cell phone is more readily available, always remember to call Public Safety at 617-333-2222. In other news, nearly 10,000 people have been killed by the Ebola virus. And even though it is largely out of the media spotlight, here in the U.S., one Curry student is still suffering the anguish every day. Ben Millett reports. The deadly Ebola virus has faded out of the news recently, but not for one of Curry's own. Yellow Bowen is from a civil war torn Ebola hosting country known as Liberia. Yellow Bowen has six family members who have passed away from Ebola, and that number is still on the rise. Yellow tries to stay in contact with their family on an everyday basis. Let me pick up the phone to call. Are you going to hear, oh, somebody just passed away? Brecken Chin, who is a professor here and also an executive director of Handreach, brought in Dan and Tom from B Brigade to lead a drum circle to show support for Yellow. The drum circle is not the only way to show support for Yellow. Here, inside of Hayford, room 205 is where you and the Curry College community can get involved. Mariah Starr has set up a box to donate medical supplies like hand sanitizer, latex gloves, and masks to the Liberian medical community in a country that is lacking medical supplies we do have sort of a moral responsibility to help. Yella has appreciated people reaching out and caring. Even though we are going through a tough time, that other people out there see and care. So just caring alone 
brings a little happy, happiness and joy. So go to Hafer room 205 and donate to the bin. For CCA, I'm Ben Millett reporting. The Ebola bin can be found on the second floor of the Hafer Academic Building. Have you had the sniffles recently and assumed it was a cold? Well, for some students, it could mean a larger problem, mold in your dorm room. CBT's Christian Traz reports. Several students at Curry have filed reports with buildings and grounds, along with residence life, that mold was found in their residence halls. A substance identified as mold was revealed in the suite bathroom of junior Nikki Levine. She says she can attribute some of her recent health concerns to the mold. Mold in the bathroom is affecting my health because I am coughing, sneezing, having a runny nose, and just chest problems. She also has asthma, which the mold makes worse. The mold affects asthma because it makes you have a harder time to breathe and causes trouble. Assistant Dean of Students for Residence Life and Housing Eric Muricep says the quickest way to rectify a situation such as this would be to submit a school dude. The college has its own environmental director, Ellen Kloss, whose office is located here behind me along with buildings and grounds. She says that mold is often found in bathrooms due to the dampness and watery conditions, but all it takes is a little bleach and water to get rid of that mold for good. That said, this reporter's advice is to stock up on Clorox. For CC8, I'm Christian Traz. If you su suspect mold beyond the typical stuff found in the bathroom, be sure to contact your community director immediately. I would suspect if I had mold, this would be a good time to look for a new dorm room. And you'd be in luck because housing selection is coming up. Deposits are due March 25th by 11.59 p.m. The lottery is scheduled for April 8th and 9th. Contact the Office of Residence Life for more information at extension 2252. Seniors, the deadline for Senior Week registration has passed. If you still haven't registered, please contact Student Activities. Senior Week will be held May 11th to the 16th, and activities include a Spirit of Boston boat cruise, Toby Keith's I Love This Bar and Grill, Mohegan Sun, Jillian and Lucky Strike Boston. Your payment for Senior Week includes a free t-shirt, housing, transportation to and from all events, and all food costs for the week. And if you still haven't paid already, the second payment, $145, is due by March 20th. Coming up next on Curry Primetime Report, meet music faculty member Julian Bryson. And we'll have the latest sports news here on campus. Stay with us. Texting while driving is a growing concern that has become more dangerous than driving under the influence of alcohol. Although we are all aware of the dangers of texting while driving, people still continue to drive with their heads down and their eyes glued to their phones in fear of not having constant contact with someone. The real question is whether that text that you just received is worth your life or someone else's life that you are putting in danger by reading the message. A driver is 23 times more likely to get into a car accident while texting than a driver who does not text while driving. Texting while driving is illegal in almost all of the country. When you are making the choice to pick up your phone while driving, you are risking being pulled over, or even worse, getting into an accident. Keep your phones put away while driving. Texting and driving is not cool. And remember, it is the law across most of the country. Welcome back to CPT. Over in the Fine Arts Building, there's a lot of new faculty. One in particular is hoping to revamp the music program. CPT's Kelly O'Donnell has his story. It's Wednesday night, which means Curry College's student choir is rehearsing. The choir, called Sing, is conducted by Julian Bryson, a new professor here at Curry. Professor Bryson teaches in the Fine Arts and Music Department. Right now I have two sections of Intro to Fine Arts. Uh, and then also the choir that I mentioned earlier, and one section of classical music survey. Professor Bryson also teaches private voice lessons to a select number of students. There you go. Hey, 
you know, he's always really happy to be in class. He's you know, never in a sour mood. He's always very happy. He's very bubbly, very effervescent. It's very clear that he's very passionate about classical music, um, and he brings that into the class, and he makes you want to like listen to it, and it makes you think about it in a way that I don't think many other professors would be able to do. Really, my belief is that you start with where students are, and it's not about you must reach this point. It's about you're at point A, let's get you to point B. And I, so I, I try to tailor things to the students that I have. It's an opportunity for them to show off a little bit um, and to hear some individuals singing in that concert too. Professor Bryson has been impressed with the Fine Arts Department at Curry College and he has high hopes that the department can expand even further. I think there's a lot of room for growth though and that's one of the most exciting things about the job uh, is the opportunity to help students realize that they can do things that they never thought they could do. For CC8, I'm Kelly O'Donnell. Professor Bryson, good luck with all of your efforts. In news of the weird, fellow CC8 TV student Ben Millett was trending on Twitter recently. Now this you have to see to believe. Ben traveled out to Worcester to the famous Boynton restaurant to try and eat the biggest hamburger any of us have ever seen. The ingredients are insane. From the burger patties itself to the toppings which range from cheese to bacon, pastrami, tomatoes, lettuce, and let's not forget the onion rings. Once the bun was on top, Ben gave it a stab. You can probably see the burger in my eyes, honestly. <laughs> I'm so full. Like, that feeling, and everybody knows that feeling. Like, Thanksgiving, like, you're just pounding through food, and the next thing you know, you're like, oh, I'm at that point where it's just like... You, you, gotta, you gotta curl up and take a nap right, right now. Not yeah. even, like, a comfortable full. It's, like, an uncomfortable full where it's just, like, I, 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 it's affecting my thought. I can't even think. So did Ben finish off that $50 monster? I heard if he, if he could, it would have been free. Well, you know, as hard as he did try, he couldn't, unfortunately. That's too bad. Well, some of the wildlife here on campus definitely would have found the leftovers in oh, Tyson. Oh, definitely. And we took to campus to ask students just what kind of wildlife they've seen around here. I've seen turkeys, I've seen deer, I've seen dogs, I've seen bunnies, I've seen cats. So I've seen deers, I've seen squirrels, I've seen birds. That's all really all I see, besides the raccoons also. I saw some raccoons and some deer before. Squirrels, raccoons, deer. nothing major. What? A lot of squirrels. A lot of squirrels? Yeah, some eating? raccoons. Some no. raccoons? Yep. <laughs> seen a fox out in the woods. Just seen a few deers around campus sometimes. Yeah, deer. Deer? Yeah. That's it? Yeah, well, I mean, squirrels and... Squirrels? Like, but mostly, I mean, I almost hit a deer, so... Squirrels. Deer. Right. I've, no, we've seen deer. Uh, I've seen deer. I saw a fox once back here, and I saw a couple deer down between the two ends of campus. Yeah, I've seen, like, turkeys and squirrels and stuff, so... I've seen a lot of turkeys. A lot of turkeys. A few deer. I've seen a lot of different wildlife. I've seen raccoons by the student center. I've seen a lot of turkeys just walking around the... Um, mostly south side, and then a couple deer right near the entrance. Let's see, squirrels, and I've seen squirrels, and I've seen more squirrels. Uh, deer. None so far, this, all the snow, but squirrels all the time during the summer. Uh, a few squirrels, birds, and uh, some creatures. I see plenty of curry creatures, me probably being one of them. None. None. Curry creatures. <laughs> That's about it. So you get a lot of variety here. Well, from my eyewitness account, I've seen turkey and deer. It's some crazy wildlife yeah, here. Yeah, me too. I've actually had uh, an incident with a deer where he almost ran into my car and said he kind of just stood there and uh, ran away after. Oh, that must have been scary. Yeah, it definitely wow. was. Well, changing gears here, we'll throw it over to Kevin Coleman with how winter sports have been going. Thanks, Brian. I'm Kevin Coleman at CC8 Sports. This past week, we saw some action-packed games from both the men's and women's basketball teams and the men's hockey team. We'll start things with the men's basketball team. Emotions were running high Saturday afternoon at the Student Center Gym as the Colonel's men's basketball team completed a disappointing season with a senior day overtime victory over Salve Regina. A pregame ceremony was held in honor of Curry's four seniors, Matt Russell, Jordan Vieira, Antonio Jones, and Kyler Bucano. The four seniors were the last remaining members of the 2013 Conference Championship team. With both teams going neck and neck the whole game, the Colonel's Antonio Jones forced overtime, and it turned out to be a senior day many people won't forget. 
Great team play and outstanding defense helped the Colonels secure an overtime victory on senior day against the Salvia Regina Seahawks. Captain Matt Russell said after the game, a lot of emotions were displayed, but we, were, we showed resiliency and I'm happy we pulled out with the win. The Colonels conclude their season at 6-19 overall, 4-14 four in league play. Now we'll shift things over to the Lady Colonels, who entered ranked number third in Tuesday night's conference quarterfinal against the Salvia Regina Seahawks. With a low scoring first half, both teams came out red hot to start the second half and they continued going neck and neck, making this game a nail biter. The Lady Colonels were able to shut down top scorer for the Seahawks, Megan Harden, and senior captain Kylie Belts helped secure a spot in the conference semis against the Endicott. The Lady Colonels wrapped up the season at 16-10. Best of luck to the ladies in their playoff run. The number four ranked men's hockey team have secured a date with number five ranked Wentworth Saturday in the conference quarterfinals on February 28th. The Colonel is currently on a five-game winning streak, and they defeated Wentworth 3-0 during this hot streak as well. Captain Braden Rude confidently said, The team is excited. We're on a good run, and beating them on their home ice has given us a huge boost of confidence going to this game. We'll have to wait and see if the Colonels can continue this winning streak as they face number five ranked Wentworth at the Ulan Rink Saturday, February 28th. Still got the winter blues? Don't worry, the spring is just around the corner and we have a brand new season filled with action-packed Curry Athletics. We have men's and women's lacrosse, baseball, softball, and tennis to look forward to. These spring sports teams are currently getting into tip-top shape so they can compete with the rest of the Commonwealth Coast Conference. CC8 will have you covered during the spring season. While not technically a sports story, you certainly know this is an important sport, sports complex on campus, Miller Fieldhouse. But I bet you didn't know some of the cool things this old barn of a building has been used for over the decades. CBT's Jamie Casagrande takes a closer look. Serving the Curry community for over half of a century, the Miller Fieldhouse is more than just a gym. On one half of the gym, where offices stand now, spanned a stage used for curry theater, dances, and other special events. Even before the days of Groove Boston, the Miller Fieldhouse, or the Miller Gymnasium at the time, was the place to be. In recent years, Miller has been undergoing renovations. Coach of lacrosse, Tim Murphy, says these changes have greatly benefited Curry Athletics. Upstairs in the gym, a new floor has been installed. Downstairs is still in need of some work, athletic director Vinny Iruzioni says. In my opinion, I think what, what needs to be done now is our locker rooms. I think all our locker rooms, both for the male side on the left and on the female side on the right, those all need to be renovated. But Miller still has some hidden history downstairs as well. As you continue down this hallway towards the weight room, you would have never known it used to be a place of worship, the school chapel. Vinny Iruzioni was not here to see the chapel in person, but he still shared a bit of history from one of our favorite teams. You know, the history knowing that the Boston Patriots, at that time they were the Boston Patriots, uh, one summer practiced in there, and all those stalls that were, that were divided out were for the Boston Patriots. That's how they got the renovation of that in the first place. From pickup basketball today to championship games of the past, Miller is a living legend on campus. For CC8, I'm Jamie Casagrande. That will do it for sports. I'm Kevin Coleman. Back to you, Brian. Thanks, Kevin. Finally tonight, yeah, we're all sick of the snow, but there's one place nearby that's turning all of this white stuff into gold. The Blue Hill Ski Area, just two miles from campus. Kyle Coppola reports. The Blue Hill Ski Area has been blanketed with a fresh coat of snow, due in part to the recent snowstorms. The slopes are packed. We talked to operations manager Zach Mafara about the season so far. Yeah, we had a rough start. Um, we weren't able, able to even start making snow until late in December, early January. Every Monday, um, we've been able to pretty much, we have everything open. Um, all trails under the trailer for the first time in five years now. So it's, it's a good season so far. Well, after a slow start to the season, the snow has definitely had an impact here at Blue Hills. We talked to some of the locals about their favorite thing about Blue Hills. I have to say Big Blue and the Terrain Park. Wonderful. Packed powder. That's what you <laughs> want. Well, probably actually the hot chocolate. The terrain Park. They got some good rails, everything. The favorite thing to do is definitely hit the rails. Probably like the Terrain Park and doing just jumps in the box. 
The Blue Hills Terrain Park was a favorite, and we talked to Blue Hills Ski Patrol's Matt Wassell about keeping everyone safe. Uh, well, we always make sure that we have, um, you know, the netting up and merge signs in, in high traffic areas. And, uh, you know, that, like I said, that's our job to keep the mountain as safe as we can. And uh, I think we do a pretty good job here. Well, with the sound of happy ski goers alike, it's been a season to remember here at Blue Hills, and it may be for the next couple of months. Reporting for CC8, I'm Kyle Coppola. Wow, the snow looks incredible up there. I mean, we have our own Blue Hills right here in the quad on campus. That's true, you know, that's going to be here until well after we've graduated. Uh, definitely. Well, let's hope for warmer days ahead and have fun on spring break, and we'll all see you later in the semester. Goodbye for now.